Hey there everybody, I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick walkthrough on my bedroom workspace, hacker space, maker space, creator space area, and show you all of the tools. To start things off, I find it difficult to get very much done on an empty stomach, so I built myself a little IKEA kitchenette in my closet uh, with a microwave, mini fridge, and a pump faucet, so I do actually have water in that sink. I went ahead and used a boat style pump faucet I bought off Amazon and uh yeah and then I've got it draining down into a bucket and a jug for water. Um, I've got myself uh, an instant coffee maker just a cheap microwave and some IKEA color changing lights. I've got a bit of a philosophy behind my workspace. I like to keep everything compact and as minimalist as I possibly can. So, for example, all of my desk setup uh, is pretty easily uh, moved or separated. It all fits through a door nicely. Uh, my toolbox, let's see, over there is on wheels, so I can go ahead and pack that up and move it easily. Um, my CNC machine fits perfectly on my desk. Um, there's a few things that kind of fall outside of that philosophy, which are okay. Um, but overall, I like it to be simple, like everything to have a purpose and function, and to have no more than I need to accomplish those tasks. And that being said, while working under those constraints, the other things that I'd like to have from my workspace is I want all of the tools I need to be able to go from an idea to a finished product or accomplishment in the least amount of time. So I want the least latency from the concept to a completed project uh, to go ahead and encourage me to be inspired and creative and productive. So you'll see behind me these very bright lights. They're just basic uh, white LED light strips. It was 15 bucks. I'm trying it out for lighting for projects and videos. So far it's working out pretty well. It can be a bit intense and harsh and I'm not sure if the placement is right um, for some of the shots, but it's working all right so far. I'm a huge fan of digital fabrication, so CNC machines, laser cutters, 3D printing, all of that. I love it. I think it's fantastic and does a great job of serving many functions and decreasing the latency I was talking about from an idea to being able to create a finished product. Um, the amount of things you can do and the potential with uh, digital fabrication is very inspiring. Also, if you set it up right, it doesn't always have to take up that much space. So while it is one of the more expensive tools, uh, it is also one of the most helpful and inspiring tools you can have. I've done a number of modifications to my CNC machine, which I can go into further detail possibly in another video. But for a quick overview, up there on the wall, you'll see I've got an upgraded Tiny G motor driver board. Um, that allows me to do quicker, smoother movements. Um, and you'll also see I've got a dust boot, which I really like that I designed uh, with felt around it that keeps everything contained. Uh, I don't have it set up with a vacuum, um, but it does cut down on the mess and makes it much easier to clean up. So I can go ahead and use it in my carpeted bedroom. All of the tools and setup you see in this video that I talk about took me years to get. Um, a lot of it is budget friendly and frugal, like I kept that in mind through the whole process. I like to do my due diligence and research the products I buy before I purchase them. Uh, but all the same, a number of things did take me a long time to get, so I'm very proud so far of where I'm at and what I've got. and the things that allows me to do. Having the right tools available when you need them and having them organized in a way that makes sense and is accessible is incredibly important and does wonders to help improve the workflow of any of your projects. So for me, 
what I found to be a great solution at this point in my life is this toolbox on wheels. Um, I keep all of my hand tools and soldering equipment. I've got a screwdriver set, wire stripper, uh, laser temperature thermometer, um, I've got a solder tip cleaner, helping hand, caliper, a solder sucker, um, multimeter, got more parts and supplies down here. I've got some ropes, some felt, a little bit of leather, a bunch of zip ties, um, some EL wire, fans, uh, hot glue gun, let's see. In the top I have my parts and electronics, prototyping equipment and pieces all organized. I've got various sizes of heat shrink. I've got uh, PCB headers and uh, breadboard power supply, various uh, soldering iron tips, velcro, potentiometer, Um, I've got servos, motors, LEDs, um, resistors, switches, another potentiometer, uh, various things I've picked up over the years. Um, I've got all different kinds of transistors. I've got uh, Arduino. I've got uh, Integrated circuits are like AT Tiny, AVR programmable chips. Um, so there's one. Here's some. I've got some motor drivers. Um, yeah, various, various other things. Got a uh, NRF two four L O one for a wireless. Um, And then I've got breadboard jumpers, uh, more jumpers, batteries, alligator clips, uh, breadboard, and then some projects I've worked on. So there's a leftover from a 26650 uh, mod I built, another uh, 3D printed mod. Um, an ESP8266 uh, Wi-Fi motion sensor uh, with a 3D printed enclosure I designed. Um, all of that I made and programmed myself. I've also adorned my toolbox in stickers for anything tech related whenever I can find one. So I've got a printer bot sticker. Got some from various hacker and maker spaces and uh, an Osh Park uh, PCB sticker. Just went ahead and put on this Code Day sticker, which is for a 24 hour hackathon focused on getting uh, teens and students involved in programming, uh, run by some people at a hacker space I used to volunteer at. I'll go ahead and do a quick Go day plug. So if any of you are interested in programming um, and meeting up and networking, it's great for young adults, teens, um, and code days are all around America and I think even outside of America now. Um, I just recently attended and helped mentor one at T-Mobile um, and it was awesome. So down here below this part of the desk I've got my video editing computer and my printer bot 3D printer. It's a dual Xeon setup. I may end up making a video about it later. Over here I've got my printer bot play, which I have a love-hate relationship with, which is part of why it's down here on the floor right now. When it works, it's amazing. When it doesn't work quite right, which has unfortunately for me been most of the time, it's incredibly frustrating been having a lot of trouble with bed adhesion and I think I have a warped bed uh, and when I first got it within the first week I had trouble with the uh, 
motor driver board and had to get that replaced. Um, I've got a few modifications done to it. I've added a webcam and I've got a Raspberry Pi on the side. Over on the side here, right now I've got some cutting material and a Dremel saw max for tearing it down to size for the CNC machine. Also, of course, I've got more LEDs and here's the controller for it to go ahead and change the backlight color. And as you can see, I've got that set up all around here. My cable management is almost non-existent, but that's okay. So over here in this drawer, I keep all the tools for my CNC machine. I've got some spray paint, uh, some machine screws and nuts. Um, I've got some aluminum back there. Just various stuff. Over here I've got papers and notebooks. I've got a Wacom pad in there which I use for uh, CAD design for 3D printing or a CNC machine. Um, in here I've got various supplements and nootropics. I've got all kinds of things in here. Got all kinds of supplements uh, and some rubbing alcohol for cleaning the surface of the print bed on my 3D printer. Um, I've got some German paracetam, um, some phenyl paracetam, other nootropics. Um, I'll probably go ahead and make a video about nootropics for my health and science series. I have a lot of experience with quite a few and I think it'd be fun to make a video about it. So over here under my laptop I've got a wireless Dremel and I've got my soldering iron so I have quick access to that. Um, speaker and I've got my monitor with a laptop stand for my MacBook over here on an articulating arm um, so I can go ahead and move that and place it however I want. Um, it's very handy, so I can position it however I like. I love this setup. And that just mounts right into the hole on my IKEA desk. Hopefully my next tool additions will probably be going right there, and I'm going to be getting an oscilloscope and a proper lab power supply. See, back here in the corner tucked away I've got my portable air conditioner because I just cannot work in focus when it's hot in the summer. And behind it, also tucked away for now, I've got my keyboard. Um, I like making music and I'd like to get more into that. And on display over here by my door I've got a couple of things that inspire me. A piece of art uh, that's very important to me and uh, I framed my beat lights uh, from my Kickstarter I did a few years back. Uh, it's a helpful reminder and an inspirational quote that's been really helpful for uh, keeping me on track, which I made a video about also. Alexa, lights off. Okay. Alexa, lights on. Okay. And the LED strip, there we go, takes a while. I love this thing. And back there I've got my bed because, again, this is my bedroom and my TV, my clothes. Here I've got a $30, I think, security camera mount from Amazon. Um, and this thing is awesome. I've used it for a number of things. Right now I've got a camcorder on it, um, so I can go ahead and point it wherever I want. Uh, and that's handy. But usually what I use it for is a mini compact projector, which I figured out was kind of a frugal home theater setup. So I've got the compact projector, which I don't have set up right now. I've got the security camera mount, which was cheap. The projector wasn't too bad. Um, I had computer speakers and, and let's see. 
a projector screen. So, yeah. So everybody has to start off somewhere. Just a few years ago, I barely had any of this, and I started off with this toolbox, and every paycheck, every little bit of money I had left over, I went ahead and bought myself some tools, even if it was just Daiso Dollar Store Japanese hand tools. It still gets the job done if that's all you have. Um, the CNC machine I was able to purchase after my Kickstarter. Um, and that has been awesome and great to have. But in general, the takeaway I'd like to leave viewers with is that you don't have to have all these things to make and create. I started with way less and slowly built it up. About 85-90% of the things you've seen that I've talked about here, I saved up and purchased for myself. Uh, the remaining bit was actually gifts and I'm very grateful for those and they've helped a lot. Um, all the same I'd still be making if I didn't have them. Actually on that note, if there's enough interest in it, I may go ahead and make a video about how to m put together a budget workspace. Um, got a bit of experience on that and I think I could set people in the right direction. So I think that'll conclude this video. I'll go ahead and include some links in the description below to some of the things I talked about in the video here. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and comment. I love it when uh, viewers comment and get involved. Um, I like to hear from you guys. And other than that, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like, um, subscribe, and stay tuned for more.